given the uh, severity of the financial crisis preoccupying the globe, Barack Obama's $800 billion stimulus package was meant to grab the world's attention. But did it? But when Wall Street veteran Jim Rogers speaks, the investment community actually tends to take notice. After all, he is a former business partner of billionaire philanthropist George Soros. Earlier this month, he raised the ire of Gordon Brown when he declared Britain finished and urged investors to dump sterling. So what does this outspoken monetary maverick think of all those monster stimulus packages currently being doled out from Washington to Canberra? I spoke with him earlier from his base in Singapore. Jim Rogers, uh, thanks for your time. As I understand it, your, your views on the current uh, world financial and economic crisis are, are, are pretty blunt. I mean, is it true that you believe, given that we've been hearing from Barack Obama all week about his stimulus plan, that that is actually going to make things worse rather than better? Well, and the people who get the money, George, is going to make it better for them. But for the rest of the country and the rest of the world, no, it's not going to make things better. It's going to make things worse. We're in perilous times, and he doesn't seem to understand it, and he's making things much worse. I guess I, guess I have to ask you, and I know that you've had years of experience on, on the financial markets, etc. Does anybody really know, let alone the cause of this, what the solution is? Well, I will tell you what has worked in the past, George. What has worked in the past is you let people go bankrupt when they fail. You clean out the system. You take a year or two or three of pain, whatever it is, and then you start over. The competent people come in, take over the assets from the incompetent people, and you start over. This way of bailing out everybody in sight doesn't work. The Japanese tried it in the 1990s. They had zombie banks and zombie companies, and they still talk about the 1990s as the lost decade. It is 19 years later in Japan since they tried all of that. The stock market is down 80 percent, 80 percent from where it was 19 years ago. This has never worked. It doesn't matter. I'm not doing ideologically here. I'm saying this has never worked. The things that have worked or take your pain and start over. So you're saying all this bailing out that's going on, because bailing people out seems to have, as you suggested, to be the way that everybody thinks we should go. That's what the stimulus packages are all about, to get people to spend more money. I mean, there's no way in the world that you or me or anybody else is going to stop the Obamas and the Browns and the Rudds of this world, in our case, from, from uh, going ahead with these stimulus packages. I'm afraid you're right. All of these politicians, they run around, they think they've got to be doing something, and if they can pa pass out enough money, they hope that they will get through the next election and someday things will be okay. Unfortunately, if they're not going to be okay, the only way we're going to get rid of them, George, is that these pr programs are going to fail and then they'll be thrown out of office. What about uh, our friend Mr. Bianchi say, saying that it'll be all over by the end of this year? I mean, he's a little bit more no. optimistic than yourself, to say the least. George, Mr. Bernanke has never been right for five, what's he's been in the government for six or seven years. He has never been right. If I came on your TV show every week and was wrong eight or nine weeks in a row, you'd probably stop inviting me. Mr. Bernanke has been wrong 300 weeks in a row. and He has never been right. If you get your advice from Mr. Bernanke, George, you're going to go broke very quickly. And you're apparently not a fan of uh, the, the, the current uh, Secretary of the Treasury either. Oh, my God, you're bad for my nervous system, George. No, of course not. Mr. Mr. Geithner was head of the New York Fed for several years. The New York Fed was the group which was in charge of Wall Street and the major commercial banks. He sat there and, and saw all this happening. He's part of the problem. It is astonishing to me that Mr. Obama ran on a platform of change, and he's brought in people who caused the problems and are there now supposed to resolve the problems. What about the companies that are vital to the economic structure, the infrastructure? structure of countries like the US and the UK and even our own that are too big to allow to be that the first allow them to fail what do you mean too big to fail there's no such thing as too big to fail there's all this there are plenty of banks in the, in Australia America and other places who've been doing what they were supposed to, minding their manners, not going and doing crazy things, waiting for these moments to come so that they could come in and expand market share and grow and prosper. Now these people are being held back by all these, quote, banks that are too big to fail because the governments are giving them free money and saying, okay, now you compete with the competent people. I mean, George, this is horrible economics, and it is outrageous morality, not that politicians care about morality. Jim, why shouldn't we see you as uh, yet another doomsayer? Ah, doomsayer. I'm very, very, very optimistic about a lot of, a lot of things, well, make in me fact, feel, make, me feel, make me feel better then, Jim, because you're painting a pretty bleak picture. 
Well, listen, we have to face reality, George. If you don't face reality and you sit there and twiddle along and believe Mr. Bernanke that everything is okay, you're going to get hit by a two-by-four, and it's going to hurt very, very, very badly. So I would urge you to be prepared. But some parts of the world economy are going to boom. George, you should become a farmer. Agriculture is about to become one of the most exciting industries in the world for the next 20 or 30 years. There are plenty of people in the world who are going to do extremely well in the times that are coming up. But it's not Wall Street. It's not the city of London. The people who have been driving Lamborghinis for the past 10 years are suddenly going to have to drive taxis, and maybe they'll learn to drive tractors so that they can work for the farmers who now will have the Lamborghinis. Gordon Brown wasn't exactly impressed when you told him that Britain was finished and that you were pulling your money out of, out, you were pulling out your sterling and told everybody else to do the same, and it had a big impact in the UK. What are you doing with your American dollars? Well, I do own U.S. dollars, but I plan sometimes this year to get rid of the rest of my U.S. dollars and my few remaining U.S. shares. Seriously? Because the U.S. And invest in, invest where, part? Jim? Invest where then? Where are you going to put your money? Ah, George, that's a brilliant question. I, I don't know right now. It looks as though I'll probably wind up putting a lot of it into real assets, such as cotton or zinc or gold or oil or whatever it happens to be. Uh, into, the, into the real economy, Australian. Jim, I could say. Into the real economy, not the unreal economy of the finance world. Uh, Absolutely. I'm talking about real products which people use every day. You and I know what cotton and silk and zinc are. You know, most of us didn't have a clue what a dot com was or what a CDO was, and yet there were billions of dollars put into them. And that's all going to change now, George. Those days are over. The financial community is going to be a very, very bad place to be for another 10 or 20 or 30 years. Are we looking at not the Great Depression, but the even greater depression? If you ask me, yes, we're going to have another depression in the United States because the politicians keep bungling it. That's, what's called the, that's what caused the Great Depression in the 1930s. Politicians around the world made mistake after mistake after mistake, and I'm afraid it's happening so again, you know, including you protectionism. You don't blame, like so many people are, the bankers and the, and the hedge market players like yourself. They're not to blame. It's the politician. It's mainly central banks and more than anybody else. It's, 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 if you want to have one single cause, it's a central bank in the United States. We had a man named Alan Greenspan, Greenspan running the central bank. He refused to let anybody fail. Every time people got into trouble, they would call up and say, save me, save me, save me. He would bail out everybody. Had he let the market work, had he let people fail over the past 15 years, Lehman Brothers would still be in business. You know, Bear Stearns would still be in business. Jim, let's, let's finish on this note, note here. In Australia, we're on the stimulus bandwagon, for better or worse, rightly or wrongly. What's what's uh, what you're feeling about this country at the moment? Because they seem to be going down the same our mini version of of the Barack Obama trail. Australia should be one of the countries that's going to come out of this in good shape because you have lots of natural resources. I said before, the people who are now going to inherit the earth are going to be the people who produce real goods, such as Australia. Unfortunately, your politicians are as bad as American politicians. They keep spending money on, on projects that are just make-work projects rather than building for the future. Look at China and Singapore, for instance. They mainly are spending the money trying to make the countries more competitive down the road. You seem to be saying that uh, this country is kidding itself if we still regard ourselves as the lucky country. Well, Australia has been a lucky country at times. I'm afraid Australia is not so lucky right now because your politicians keep making mistakes just like mine do. Jim, it's good talking to you. I hope next time that we talk things are looking a little brighter. I hope that, uh, I hope that your optimism for the, for the long term future we see a little earlier maybe. George, go become a farmer. <laughs> I'll, think, I'll think long and hard about that. Jim, sounds like good advice. Th thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Rogers, and what a pity we couldn't get him to tell us what he really feels. Up next, the Clooney's, not just multi-talented, but politically committed. That's uh, George doing a caricature of me about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. <laughs> so I used it as the cover. He's, uh, he, has a, he has a flair about about anything he tries, puts his hand to.